Hello, I'm Josh Idev from Roaring Penguin Technical Support. In this video, we'll discuss recipient verification in Canon. Our goal is to understand what we mean by recipient verification. Why is it important to verify recipients? And how does Canon verify recipients? With this understanding, our companion videos will demonstrate setting up recipient verification. This video applies to Canon Pro and Canon Domain Pro, and it applies for hosted Canon as well as on-premises deployments. What is recipient verification? It simply means getting Canon to reject mail to recipients that don't exist. Canon is usually deployed as an independent system that scans and filters email, stopping spam and sending only the good email to a back-end mail server. Since Canon itself does not host any accounts or inboxes, Canon does not know which recipient addresses are valid or invalid. We need a way for Canon to verify recipient addresses so that it can reject mail to non-existent recipients. You may be watching this video because you received a warning that looks like this from your Canon system checker. This message tells us that Canon is not able to perform recipient verification for this domain. Now that we understand what recipient verification is, let's find out why we care. After all, if the system checker is giving us a warning, then there must be a problem, right? We need to validate recipients for two main reasons. When Canon doesn't know which recipients are invalid, it has to scan and filter mail for all recipient addresses, whether they exist or not. This means that Canon is creating streams, scanning, trapping, and processing mail for recipient addresses that don't exist at all. This is a waste of resources. If Canon can simply reject these messages, it doesn't need to waste time and storage dealing with useless messages. This is especially important during a dictionary attack. A dictionary attack is when spammers try to send spam to huge lists of recipients that are made up or collected as if from a dictionary or phone book hoping that by some chance some will exist and they'll get their spam messages out. The other reason is to avoid being blacklisted on RBLs. When Canon accepts a message to a non-existent recipient and then tries to deliver it to the back-end mail server, and the back-end mail server rejects it, Canon is now responsible for sending a delivery status notification, or DSN, back to the sender. Oftentimes the sender address is spoofed, so the sender gets this DSN in their inbox for a message they never sent or have never heard of, and they might report it as spam. Since Canon is the server that sent the DSN, Canon is the server that gets listed on the RBL. If, on the other hand, Canon were to reject the message, then the server trying to deliver the message to Canon is now the one that has to send the DSN, not Canon, so Canon won't get blacklisted. Now that we know what recipient verification is and why we need it, Let's find out how to set it up. Canon can verify recipients in three ways. First, there are some user lookups that include recipient verification, LDAP, Active Directory, and program methods. Of course, for a program lookup, the validation only works if the program being used supports it. Then there is the most common option, a verification server. And finally, there is the valid recipients table. The question is, which of these should we use? Let's talk first about user lookups. First, it's important to understand that the primary purpose for user lookups is not to perform recipient validation. User lookups are for allowing users to authenticate to the web interface and for determining stream names. In Canon, each user has their own spam trap. A trap and all of its settings is called a stream. Canon needs a way to find out which stream to use for each recipient. A user lookup provides a way for Canet to supply a recipient address and then receive a stream name. For example, with Active Directory, Canet looks up the address to find the owner's account name, which is used as the stream. When Canet looks up a recipient and the user lookup method says that it doesn't exist, then Canet can reject the message. If it does exist, then Canet gets a stream name. If you already have a domain mapping method for your domains, you may not wish to change to a user lookup. If you do so, your user's stream names will probably change. On the other hand, if you're setting up a new domain and there is an LDAP or Active Directory server available, then by all means, use a user lookup. Program methods provide a way for Canet to do lookups by calling a customized program. This is useful when stream mapping and authentication must be done by some other method for which Canet doesn't have built-in support. 
The most common method for recipient verification is to use a verification server. As each message is delivered to Canet, it connects to the verification server and uses SMTP commands to test the sender and recipient address. If the server rejects them, then Canet can reject the message. The verification server is almost always the same SMTP server as the back-end mail server to which Canet delivers good mail. It's important to understand that the verification server must reject mail to invalid recipients in order for recipient verification to work. Exchange, for example, does not reject mail to invalid recipients by default, but it can be made to do so. In Exchange, this is a feature called recipient filtering. Let's see how we can test a server to see if it rejects mail to invalid recipients. I'm going to telnet to mail.roaringpenguin.com on port 25. Mail.roaringpenguin.com is Roaring Penguin's mail server, and port 25 is the SMTP port. Hello me. Mail from support at roaringpenguin.com. Sender OK. RCPT2. Something made up at roaringpenguin.com. User unknown. So this mail server is behaving correctly. When I try to send a mail to a recipient that doesn't exist, it responds with user unknown, and it rejects my command. If neither a user lookup nor a verification server will work, Canet has another option called the valid recipients table. A list of all recipient addresses is imported into Canet. Then we activate a setting that tells Canet to reject mail to recipients not listed in the table. This is a per stream setting. You can enable it in the default stream so that all other streams inherit it, or you can enable it only in certain streams that need it and not others. The table can be kept up to date manually or programmatically by using our application programming interface, our API. In Canet Pro, we must be careful enabling this setting in the default stream. If there are multiple domains, then the table must contain all valid addresses for all domains. We know what recipient verification is, we know why we need it, and we know how it works. Now, how do we decide which option to use for our domain? If our existing domain already has a user lookup that includes recipient verification, that's great. If we're setting up a new domain and there's an LDAP or Active Directory server available, we should use it. If not, or we already have an existing domain that's already set up, we should use a verification server. We don't want to set up a new user lookup because that will probably change the stream names around. Finally, we should use the valid recipients table as a last resort, keeping in mind that we'll need to keep the table up to date as new recipients are added to our domain and old ones leave, and that if we have multiple domains using the Canet server, then either the default stream should not be used for the table or all addresses in all domains must be put into the table. Now that we have a full understanding of recipient verification, Please check out our companion videos that demonstrate how to set up the recipient verification method of your choice in Canet. Thank you for watching.